Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Back to that lemon light city, sweet old Chicago. Hi there, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine show with the greatest cameraman in the business today, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Avi Myers. Avi Myers here, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine. And the most important thing I have to say to all of you right now is, Hi, Marty. Thank you so much for that wonderful intro. And don't you just love this great haircut that he gave me today that I haven't totally messed up yet? Marty's done a wonderful job as usual. Anyway, I want to thank my entire technical crew, Sonny Hirsch. I'd like to, all of you to join us on the web at www.ntnm.org, where you can watch all of these shows in their entirety on the web through YouTube, through Sonny Hirsch's website. And... Um, at this point, something like 14,000 shows have been watched by you, and it keeps increasing all the time. Thank you so much. I uh, also want to encourage you to find out about all your latest community policing meetings in the neighborhood. Please go to Sonny Hirsch's website at caps24.org. He's the chairman of the District Advisory Committee of the 24th District. If you are outside of the 24th District, which is basically, excuse me, West Rogers Park, Rogers Park, and a little bit of Edgewater, call 311 to find out where your latest community policing meeting is. I can't begin to tell you how important it is to talk to the police officers themselves face to face. Uh, there is no substitute for that and you will get much better service. All this other stuff is just, you know, it doesn't serve you as well or your neighborhood as well as talking to the police officers face to face. There's nothing like it. They're not going to bite you. They're pretty nice guys for the most part and they try to do a good job. In any event, at this point, it is my pleasure and privilege to introduce to you the Commissioner of the 13th District of Cook County in his second term, and as far as I'm concerned, the leading candidate for State's Attorney of Cook County, somebody who I will vote for early and often if he wouldn't arrest me for it, or the present State's Attorney wouldn't arrest me for it. We're talking about Larry Suffernan. How are you? Bobby, thanks for having me. Glad first, to be here. First of all, my pleasure. And uh, how's the campaign trail? <laughs> well, you know, we're uh, as we're taping this, we're about uh, five days away from when you can file your petitions, and uh, we're collecting petitions all over the county, and it's going well. Uh, there are potentially six other candidates out there, though I think only two of them are, are really serious candidates, the two Chicago aldermen, Alderman Brookins and Alderman Allen, uh, and I'm feeling very good. I mean, I think that, uh, uh, you know, as I go and talk to people about the state's attorney's office, my independence and what I've shown on the county board is it is really well received. I always tell people Alberto Gonzalez has proved to us <laughs> of what happens when it, when you, you lose an independent prosecutor, an independent justice office. Uh, my experience, I think I've tried more cases than anybody I'm running against. I've been in the U.S. Supreme Court, the Illinois Supreme Court, a lot of appellate court work, a lot of places in, in, in the Circuit Court of Cook County. So I've got the experience and I think I've got the judgment to show that I am a fair person who can apply the law and bring justice to all of our neighborhoods. And from sea to shining sea. No, I, I actually, I, uh, you, you definitely have a great background, you know, trying things in the Supreme Court and, and on many different levels. And, you know, the fact is you've got the respect. You know, you, you've got an interesting mix of, of support here. Because on the one hand, you know, you've definitely got ties to the daily administration. And again, with the independent people, too. You know, they're very fond of you, no question. Well, I've been very lucky. You know, and part of that is, as a lawyer, I've had the privilege of representing a lot of different people in a lot of different uh, situations. You know, Jan Schakowsky is the chair of my campaign. The um, co-chairs are uh, former Judge Anthony Young, who's from the West Side, was a state representative, and has just been a great friend. Um, former Judge Dave Erickson, who was the first assistant in Dick Devine's office and is just another wonderful person. Former Judge Gino DeVito, uh, former Judge Abner Mikva, our, our former congressman, Deborah Shore, our current Water Reclamation Commissioner, and someone who I've been able to help in a lot of things. And we have a lot of other people involved. I've put together a great team. Mary Morrissey is going to be the campaign manager. I've got Pete Greco and his team helping me. 
I've hired John Anzalone, who's one of the great pollsters in the country, to help me focus and make sure I'm speaking to the right issues. And I've got Squire Knapp, the group that's done Mr. Morgenthal's uh, commercials in New York City, who really understand how it is to communicate justice issues to people in a district attorney type race. That sounds very good. And uh, now in terms of where are your offices located for the uh, campaign? We're going to be using a number of different offices. We have one office in Evanston using the Democratic Party of Evanston office. We're working out of my That's uh, D-O-P-E. No, D-P-O-E. D-P-O-E. <laughs> right. Right. Sorry about that. Right. Oh, and by the way, just for the record, sportsman, just letting me make sure the camera's on me. Um, for those of you who, who, who say these horrible things about me on the web, I, I had a crown fall out. I couldn't see any markets. It's only one tooth, okay? I'm uh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, on a good dental work, and a, what should we, Marty, you, you give Nady Marty credit. Nady does a great job. Should you tell your dentist this, too, after all you give well, Marty Well, no, Nady, Nady does a great job, but it's not his fault that this, this thing went and smacked me in the face and my crown fell out. Okay. Well, uh, you know, we have the office at the DPOE. We're using my law office downtown, uh, Senator Ricky Hendon's political office on the west side. We're going to get be opening an office on the south side, so we're going to be Throughout the uh, suburbs, we're going to have an office in Lyons Township. We'll have one, hopefully, in Proviso Township. We'll be out in Bloom and Orland. It's a big county, and, and the state's attorney's job is kind of misunderstood by a lot of people. I mean, we bring 66,000 criminal complaints, information, and indictments a year, and that side of the office is important, but so is the civil side. And one of the things that I want to try to do, if I'm fortunate enough to win this, is re-energize the office and get it away from the courthouse and into the communities to listen to people. Because there are about 150 different communities within all of Cook County, and each of those communities needs to know that this office cares about them and that the discretion that's used in this office is the same if you're in New Trier or if you're in Lawndale or if you're in uh, Bloom Township or Orland Park or Proviso Township. And that's what I want to work to try and get uh, done. And yeah, no, there's, there's a, uh, this is, listen, just in our neighborhood alone, I mean, the neighborhood we film from, it's just, you know, it's, it's certainly as diverse as possibly can be. So you've got a whole county with, with what, about 8 million people? Well, I wish it were 8 million people. It's, it's actually six, uh, five and a half million people. I, actually, I don't know the count anymore. You so know, I, I'm, I, I'm supposed to introduce next, a week from Sunday, Al Franken at a dinner, and I was just oh. doing some research, you know, he's running for the United States Senate. In Minnesota. in Minnesota, right. Well, Minnesota is just a little bit more than 4 million people. I'm going to have to present myself to more people to be elected state's attorney of Cook County than he's going to be to get a vote in the United States Senate. I mean, that's kind of shocking. And, and I flew home about a week ago from Washington with Joe Biden, and I realized that, you know, the, the population of Delaware is almost the population of my county board's district and, and a half of another one. So, you know, we, we live in a, an extremely large and diverse area. My district is probably one of the most diverse, just Rogers Park, and then you should go into the suburbs going all the way up to Glencoe and, and the county line. And let's not forget, of course, West Rogers Park from Arthur up. <laughs> yes, well, exactly. <laughs> and, well, West and East Rogers Park, you know. Although you do miss very, Devon Avenue, you still got the residents there. Up. But I still eat on Devon Avenue. Thank, and thanks okay. to you, Avi, I know some of the better restaurants and the better restaurateurs. But one of the things that, that, that I really want to do with this office is, is, on a regular basis, have prosecutors in our schools, our grade schools and our high schools, trying to work with young people to understand the consequences of certain behavior. We have way too many young people who are in, in jail and, and, and locked up. I also want to get an open community advocacy offices, which I'll do in conjunction with public offices of the alderman, the state rep, the state senator, the county commissioner, to sit down and listen to communities. So if, we, if gangs, if guns, if drugs are the problem in your neighborhood, that we're doing something about it. If it's an environmental concern that we're doing something about it, if kids have more incidents of asthma than they should here, we should find out. I mean, the state's attorney has civil powers as well as criminal powers. We should be looking at those who take advantage of anyone on, on mortgage refinancing or payday loans. So I, I'm really looking forward to ex at making this office on the civil side a little bit more dynamic and working in conjunction with the attorney general on a number of projects. I think that would be great. I'd like to see payday loans ended, frankly. And um, I'm not sure how I introduced you to restaurants, but... <laughs> well, you, point, you, you have pointed out to me different restaurants and, and told me about people on Devon Avenue that I should uh, get to know. And That's between true. you and Alderman Stone, okay. uh, I've learned a lot about uh, vegetarian cooking, a, a lot about uh, other things. You know, it's, yeah, it, kosher uh, cooking. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, Devon Avenue, I mean, in the district, that is just 
one little example of the diversity that we live in. That's true. With the Pakistanis, the Croatian Center, the the, the uh, Indians. Uh, you know, you're, you're dealing with so many different groups. Uh, yeah, Jews, cool. Russians. As a matter of fact, we're talking about a whole new street. As a matter of fact, one of the things Alderman Stone is arranging right now is we're looking at a whole new streetscape in Devon in anticipation of the 2016 Olympics. Because right now, as a matter of fact, while the boxing is, is in town as we film, uh, a number of the athletes are going to be spending their time on Devon Avenue. And uh, for the Olympics, this will be the home for an awful lot of people during the Olympics. And, and they're looking at, you know, Alderman Stone's getting Devon spiffed up right now for that occasion. Well, you know, I think we're all looking forward to the Olympics. I think I told you once, I've been to seven Olympics. Really? Uh, I didn't know that. My wife and I have been uh, great fans of the Olympics. We've been to four summer and three winter Olympics. Wow, and, I didn't know that. And they're they are really one of the most marvelous international events you can go to, meeting people from all around the world and sharing the experience of, of great competition. I, I, uh, in fact, I, as I think of Devon Avenue, the most exciting sporting event I think I have ever been at was a field hockey game between Pakistan and India that ended one to nothing. And I sat on one, uh, this was at the L.A. Games, I sat on the Indian side for the first half and the Pakistani side for the second half. That's a good politician. Uh, uh, <laughs> India won one to nothing, and the home of the Pakistani captain was burned that night. Wow. You know, because, because the whole countries were involved in this, uh, th this match. But the, the match on the field was just spectacular, and I really didn't think I'd be that excited about field hockey. Yeah, by the way, just down the block at Boone School, they play cricket every Sunday. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, you know, Cubs had a shortstop, Andre Rogers, who was a great cricket player. That I didn't. I he, knew about Andre Rogers. Yeah, he, he, was a he, could, he couldn't hit much as a, <laughs> as a baseball player. No, he couldn't feel very but, well either for a shortstop. <laughs> you know, as we talk about all this diversity, it really ties into what's important in the state's attorney's office because we've got to be able to have people throughout the entire county feel that justice is the same, their place or somewhere else. And you know, one of the issues that keeps coming up when I go places is this whole wave of publicity about police brutality and certain police officers crossing the line. And, you know, we're going to have a new Chicago police superintendent at the same time we have a new state's attorney. And I, one of the things that I'm hopeful for is that we can help reestablish the credibility of both offices, which have been tarnished by the Burge case, the police brutality of getting these confessions beat out of people, and, and, and give support to those police officers who are doing a wonderful job, and that's 99.9% .9 of all the police officers. Right. But, you know, as in any group, be it lawyers or police officers, there's a small group that seem to always want to be trying to play close to the line, cross the line, and, you know, we've got to, to try to weed that out and, and give people confidence that that is happening. You know, I always say uh, you don't question. need an inspector general's office at the city or the county if the state's attorney's office is aggressive on those kind of things. Well, by the way, that's actually true. I like that. Yeah. I like that. But, yeah, you know, the, the fact is that people need to realize, that, yeah, 99% of those officers are, are perfectly fine people, but the trouble is because there's police and you've got, what, 12 to 14,000 police officers. Right. You're going to have some bad eggs. It's just kind of the way it is. Well, we all know that we all feel safer knowing that there are police officers who live in our community. Yeah. You know, and whenever I go and talk to groups, I look out there and I know the police think that they dress spiffily and so that they, they can't be distinguished, but you can look out and you know who the officers are. And they're an important part of the community. But we also know that there are other officers who have scared people and have done things they shouldn't have. So we've got to, as a community, come together to support those great officers who we want in the community and to make sure that these others don't take away the pride that those men and women have in being on, on the, the police force. No question, no question at all. Talk, talk about the states, uh, uh, would you make changes to the state's attorney staff itself? I think so. What, what, one of the things that needs to happen is there needs to be greater diversity in the staffing. And, and I think that what's happened to the office, the office has grown. There's now almost 990 lawyers. You know, it, it's a huge number of lawyers. Where back in the 70s, it was, the office was just a little over 200. And, you know, you're not giving, uh, lawyers aren't getting the opportunity to get the kind of experience that they should. So I, I, I intend to try and bring in some uh, lawyers with greater diversity and, and begin to try to restructure how we assign cases and who gets the, uh, the, the opportunity to try cases so that that greater diversity is more visible to all citizens in the courtroom. I, I also want to help younger lawyers, you know, today, a young man or woman leaves law school with about $120,000 on average debt, student loans. And those student loans are just so large 
that they have nothing that they can do but stay a short time in public service because they've got to go out and earn more money if they want to have a family, if they want to buy a house. And we're going to try and figure out a way to help them pay those student loans down. I've actually got a friend my age, okay, who still hasn't finished paying off his student loan, and he's a lawyer. And, and you know, th that's unfortunately what happens. And there's two kinds of student loans. There's the government loans that are guaranteed and have like a 2% interest rate and then there are these private loans which are often nine to twelve percent interest and those are the ones we've got to help our assistant state's attorneys pay down so that they can stay in the office and we can all benefit from their experience no that would be very very important and frankly i think some of those loans and the PD loans and i mean this stuff is tantamount to being criminal it just it bothers me well and if it is criminal we have the ability in the state's attorney's office to use our criminal powers but if it's civil yeah, see, we have the power to do unfortunately that. you know our state legislature seems to be one of the finest legislatures money can buy and, um, you know, I, you got to work with him. So I, I'm saying that he's not. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and let, me, let me just say that, you know, we're very fortunate where we live. We have some of the more phenomenal and dynamic legislators in the General Assembly. You I'll know, agree. You know, there who, are some uh, good people here. Julie Hamos is the one fighting to make sure that that CTA bus that runs in front of your house and, and that L that runs. Well, actually, I wish it was running in front of the house. I do have to walk about a block to get well, it. I'm sorry. But I happen to, by the way, I will agree with you, and I will say that I actually think right now that Julie Hamos from this area is the number one and the best state legislator, senator, whatever you want to call it. I think she's totally outstanding in her efforts and what she's been doing. Well, she's going to do everything she can to make sure that the CTA and the RTA crisis is solved. Uh, we all know how important it is to have those buses and trains that are nearby. Oh, no question. Listen, I, I have already taken, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to wind up being on seven or eight different uh, trains and buses today. So over the course of the day, I've, I've had more of an active day. And after I'm finished today, I'm actually going downtown and editing the shows. So over actually in Greek town. Over on Green Street, right? Yeah, you've yeah. been there. Right. You've yeah. been there with Munir Mohammed. Yeah. Well, I've been there for a number of shows. I did Ed, Ed McElroy's show there and... You know, there's, and, you, and I've called in on your uh, uh, election day. Right, that's special. right. You called in together with. Uh, well, actually, we won't. Well, maybe we'll talk about him in a different part yeah, of the right. interview, because he's not the most popular guy these days. But we'll also have you call in, call in, or be there the next. As a matter of fact, you know what? I've already got a commitment. Uh, well, the, the, when we do our election show this year, I've got two co-hosts with me. So one of them is going to be Jim Nally, who you know, who is always well. there. Okay, and the other guy is another friend of yours. Uh, Dick Devine. Dick Devine, <laughs> who will be for the first time not on the ballot. But when, and and, and uh, Dick, you know, Dick is another constituent of mine here in the 13th district. We want to try and keep the state's attorney's office in in this uh, county board. I'm all in favor district. of that. But you know, Dick has done a great job. 12 years in that office and not having a major scandal is a, is a, a I think a significant uh, accomplishment. Um, I know there are people who wish he had been more aggressive on this and that, and I, you know, I. Uh, on some of this police brutality, but I think he is somebody who has done what he believed was the right thing to do. He has been consistent in trying to administer the office. He has taken that office uh, through some very difficult times, the fire in which many of his staff were, were injured. And by the um, way, he, he himself was... Uh, very close was, to being seriously injured yeah, that night. in that fire. Yeah. But, but one of the things that people don't realize about Dick Devine, and, and you know, I try to get the better politicians on, um, doesn't always happen that way. He's one of the better ones, okay, that I'll say. But the fact of the matter is that, that if people really understood what kind of effort Dick Devine puts into making, um, you know, the state's attorney's office the best he thinks it can possibly be, you know, he really does. This guy really tries hard. He's a real Boy Scout. Well, he, he is a, a true trooper. Uh, I know he enjoys being on your show because he's actually a neighbor. Uh, he lives on the same street you do. And, uh, yeah, he's just three down. blocks down as a Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's always easy for him to get here to your studio. And the funny thing is that, well, actually, the studio is my dining room. There's a mirror back there. This is the dining room table. We just take the cover off. But, uh, you know, the, the thing I like about you him is... You shouldn't have told people that. They, they think that, you know, <laughs> this is like coming from 30 Rock in Manhattan. Hey, wow. What can I say? But he actually, the funny thing about him is, like, all these people actually, you know, bring their drivers and all the rest of it. You drive yourself, as a matter of fact. He actually walks here. Yeah, well, <laughs> and I, you know, I wish I could ride my bicycle here. I had more time, and I wasn't always racing here from downtown. Oh, no, you're doing, usually being late for you. You're doing 37 million things at once. There's no yeah. question about it. Uh, but, you know, Avi, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the state's attorney's race. I mean, this is an important race. 
February 5th is the primary. You know, the presidential primaries will be happening at the same time. It's going to be a very, very short campaign season, kind of like a European race. Uh, and yeah, very I, short this you know, time. You know, because we'll be filing, and then you have the holidays that will intervene. And really, from January 2nd to February 5th, this is going to be the race to watch at the local level. No question. And if they actually, actually, if the beers were better this year, you might have a one-day campaign from two-day campaign. From well, Super Bowl Sunday to that Tuesday. Well, you know, and and the Bears uh, seem to be getting a little better. Let's hope that they're uh, getting better. The new and we're quarterback both big fans. You know, we'll see. Yeah, how Bob it has definitely been greasing the wheels. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, if it were Bob, but it's Brian that's our quarterback. Oh, that's right. Uh, Bob, Bob's, Bob's daddy. <laughs> Bob's dad did a hell of a job for the Miami uh, I'm Dolphins. I'm showing my age. Yes, right. And that's the guy who messed up our 17 and 0 season. Uh, became... <laughs> that's right. That's right. But but. Uh, and Bob did his father did a great job at Purdue, while Brian did a good job at Michigan. Yeah, you're you're right. Okay, I, I'll you know you got me. <laughs> okay. Well, so, um, Avi, what are the issues that you, as you go around the neighborhood, uh, hear that people have to say about the state's attorney's office? Well, first of all, well, you know, part of it is going to be people are just starting to get into the campaign right now. I, I think people are going to care about the quality of prosecution. I think the idea of making things more visible to people. The way you talk about people understanding um, things like not just the diversity, but what's going on. I think the idea of bringing things to people is very important. You, you know, the, the fact is that, that Dick Devine has done some good, no question, in bringing neighborhood offices to the neighborhood. It sounds like you want to go a step above that. Um, I have heard, you know, one of the funny things is that when things go wrong, that's when you really hear a lot. Yeah. And when you don't hear very much, that means things are going right. And, and, and to that aspect, Dick Devine, you know, has done a pretty good job. In, in terms of people are just starting to get into it now. I mean, as you know, it's, we're still five days away as we film from the actual filing of the petitions. Um, Cass Katowski, when he was here, last filming session, was talking about it. He was talking about how... Um, his son, Dan, is going to be a big supporter of yours. And, yes, uh, and Dan's a, a great state senator, and we're, I was with him last weekend at a number of uh, events in his district out in the northwest suburbs. We're really proud of uh, somebody from the neighborhood who has now become a state senator in an area where our Democrat had never been elected since 1870. Right, uh, which is pretty impressive. By the way, the one thing i got to tell you that's kind of funny, I, I almost heard nothing about Dick Devine either. And somebody mentioned, I want to say it was the Rwando Cruz trial. Yes. Except if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure that was in Cook County. That was not. That, 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 was, that was all in DuPage. But you know what I think happens is yeah. the, the DuPage County State's Attorney's Office did not look good in that case. And I think that what happens when you have a case like that, it makes the Cook County office look much better by comparison. No question. And you know, I find it interesting, too, because, you, because alternative papers like The Reader, uh, which, which have a good time bashing Mayor Daly on a regular basis, really have almost been kid-gloving Dick Devine. I think they understand that this guy is really trying to do a job, and they have a lot of respect for him. Well, you know, I was, I was with the mayor today, and, and uh, I really, uh, I went to talk to him since he's a former state's attorney, and I, I could tell just as we were talking that being the state's attorney was one of those jobs he truly loved. I mean, he loves being mayor, obviously, but the state's attorney's office is really a unique opportunity to help people, help the victims of crime, help help neighborhoods, deal with, with situations, help kids stay out of trouble and not go to the penitentiary. I mean, it really is something that, that you can see constructively that your work is changing the lives of people. And that's what I hope I can give them the opportunity to. So I will hope that all of you out there will consider voting for me at the February 5th in the Democratic primary for state's attorney of Cook County. Well, you know what? We, we don't have that much time left. We're looking at about five and a half, six minutes. But I do want to talk a little bit. You are a county board commissioner, and, of sure. course, the county board has definitely been in the news like there's no tomorrow lately. And, and the answer to the questions is no, 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 and no. And the questions are, are you in favor of the sales tax, the utility tax, the gas tax, and the parking tax? I, I, I'm not. Uh, you know, we're kind of having an orgy of taxes thrown at all of our people, and I'm very concerned that we are going to drive people out of Cook County. You know, yeah. my district runs up to the Lake Cook Road. It is cheaper to buy things on the Lake County side than it is on the uh, the Cook side. And I, there are communities on Lake Cook Road, like Buffalo Grove, that are in both communities, both in, in Cook County and Lake County. Oh, I didn't realize it was... Yeah. Uh... Buffalo Grove is divided right through Lake Cook Road. Oh, I didn't realize. And I'm very concerned that, you know, what will happen in those kind of communities is that all the retail and all the development will happen on the Lake County side and nothing will happen on the Cook side. So 
we're struggling. Um, you know, we, we need to do things to stabilize and give people confidence in the county government, and unfortunately, I don't think that exists right now. It doesn't. There's and, no way. And, and each day, we have another goofy situation that seems to develop. And so I, I'm, I'm doing the best I can to try to stabilize the government and to come up with revenue ideas that do not involve taxes. And I'll just give you an example. A year ago, we were told that the, uh, the, the county could save $150 million if it refinanced all of its long-term capital debt, uh, which is pretty significant. That's a, a huge number. Never was done. And, uh, you know, they said $150 million. Well, they're, they're now telling us that, you know, we need about $146 million to cover our labor costs and our increase in, in health care costs and for all of our employees. And having positive morale of our employees is important. Here's a, a mechanism that could be used that would handle that completely. And, you know, we're, we're going to always struggle with health care. Health care is going to be difficult, especially when you're dealing with health care for the poor. And issues that are out there relating to immigration. Some people in this county who need health care, their, their legal status is birthy. Right. Now, no question about that. And, and I want to, I guess you're one of the people that deserves credit because we finally are getting something of a health clinic exactly. in the neighborhood. I guess the Heartland's moving in on uh, Tui. On Tui, we we will have had we will have three federally qualified health clinics in Rogers Park within the the year. There is already the Excess Clinic on Howard on uh, uh, East on Howard, uh, right across from Gale School and Park. There there is a, a program that uh, is going into a, a Trilogy over on uh, by the uh, the tracks there on uh, is that Ravenswood? This Ravenswood, right? Yeah. And, and then the Heartland. And all of those federally qualified programs, which Congresswoman Schakowsky has helped to support, will get us primary care for many, many of our people. And then we will work with the local hospitals and with Stroger Hospital to get specialty care for those people who need it. So I think we're, we're extremely uh, fortunate to be in the situation we're in. And I really uh, uh, am glad that I've had some part in being able to work with the community to get this health care. But, you know, you can't stop. Health care is well, one of the Well, you were definitely things. the squeaky wheel on health care for this area. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate well, that. Well, first of all, thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if we don't make these communities strong, then it, it should be our fault and we should really be blamed because we have really such phenomenal traditions and, and, and neighborhoods and institutions, schools, churches, synagogues that are all here and, and uh, we need to be working with everybody. And, you know, what, what, just thinking about that, um, I, as state's attorney, one of the things I want to emphasize is making sure there are fewer and fewer hate crimes. Because the one thing that, you know, you understand as you try to deal with diversity is that the opposite of, of positive harmony in a neighborhood is hate. And we need to make sure that those crimes that are aimed at people because of their religion, because of their race, because they dress differently, are emphasized and that the entire community knows that we won't tolerate that kind of thing. Which I think is important and then some. Um, if people want to contact your campaign. Uh, my campaign is uh, on the web. It's www.sufferedin for states attorney and for is F-O-R. And uh, the information there, uh, you can reach us. This at, dot com? Uh, it's dot org. I'm dot sorry. org. Okay. Dot org. I'm sorry. So Sufferden for States Attorney dot org. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, my pleasure. A and uh, we would welcome uh, to have volunteers. We'd look forward to have invitations to come and talk to groups. We have a little more than 100 days left in this campaign. And it is going to be a sprint, and I really look forward, and I'm appreciative of every opportunity I have to talk to people, and that's why appearing on Avi's show, which not only on the web is it available, but I tell you, whenever I appear on the show, anywhere I go in the city or the suburbs, people stop me and say, I saw you the other night on that guy. When it's, when it's not from our area, they say, that guy from the north side. <laughs> okay, so I'm glad to be here with the guy from the north side. And by the way, Rich Miller uh, makes a point of uh, highlighting this also on yes. Capital Facts uh, exactly, when you're on. Exactly, exactly. And, so and not, have, actually, not, nobody else, just when you're on. <laughs> yeah, well, Rich Miller is, who is, I really admire the job he does with Capital Facts and how he's been able to put a whole lot of things together. He does, he does really does a great job. At this point, I want to thank my entire technical crew, Sonny Hirsch, with this very moment is picking up Marlene because really we're kind of running late. 
But I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Check us out on the web, ntnm.org. Thanks so much, Larry Sufferton. Thank you, Abby. Vote for him for state's attorney. I'm your host, Avi Myers. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.